In the summer of 2017, Fantasialand announced one of the most protomental yet monumental roller coasters to be built, Fly, the first ever launched flying coaster. Construction would begin in July of that year with a set opening date of July 2019. While the coaster may have been completed by that opening date, the new land it was located in, Rookburg, was not. Finally, in September of 2020, Fantasialand would soft open Rookburg and open fly to the public. Everyone was shocked not only to see that Rookburg opened unexpectedly, but to see how crazy and astonishing fly really is. So today, I'm going to be telling you guys how fly changed the industry. In 2016, Fantasialand in rural Germany opened Klugheim, a multi-million dollar experience that packed in incredible rock work, theming, and two new roller coasters. One of these coasters would be none other than Terran, a new Intamin Blitz coaster that soared all over Klugheim. Its confusing and never-ending layout packed in with top-notch theming automatically made this coaster one of the best. Enthusiasts from around the world flooded to Fantasialand just to experience the one and only Terran. Due to Klugheim's success, Fantasialand wanted to build another multi-million dollar expansion. In the summer of 2017, Fantasialand would announce their next land, along with another state-of-the-art roller coaster. The park would announce Rukberg, a steampunk-themed land that would include new restaurants, shop, a new hotel themed to Charles Lindbergh, and a new roller coaster. This coaster would be Fly, the first ever flying launched coaster. This coaster would be manufactured by Vacoma, which I thought was interesting because Vacoma does not have a good history when it comes to the flying coaster. For those who don't know, Vacoma created the first ever flying coaster back in the year 2000. Vacoma opened Stealth at California's Great America using their prototype Flying Dutchman model. This coaster would have riders start off by sitting down in what looked like a normal car, but then the train would tilt the cars backwards, leaving riders flat on their back. After ascending the lift hill, the coaster would flip riders over, leaving them staring face first towards the ground. The layout would keep flipping the riders over, giving them the sensation as if they were flying. Stealth would get relocated over to Carowinds where it still operates today as Nighthawk. Vokoma would build two more Flying Dutchmans. One would be at Six Flags America where it still operates today as Batwing, and the other would be X-Flight at the now defunct Six Flags Worlds of Adventure. This coaster would actually be relocated to Kings Island where it would operate as Firehawk, only to be demolished back in 2018. Vacoma would even open a new and modern version of their Flying Dutchman called the Stingray back in 2009. This coaster would operate at the giant wheel park of Suzhou in China, however it would unfortunately close for good in 2018. When it comes to flying coasters, B&M has been the elite manufacturer for those models throughout the past two decades. These models were much smoother and enjoyable than the flying coasters that were made by Vacoma. When you look at B&M's first flying coaster, Galactica at Alton Towers, and then you look at their latest flying coaster, Flying Dinosaur at Universal Studios Japan, you can see that over time, B&M really expanded the thought on what a flying coaster can actually do. So if Akoma wanted to continue creating flying coasters, they needed something new, something that has never been seen before. In 2017, they would show us their latest prototype. Vacoma would introduce their new gen flying coaster. This coaster would have riders load into the cars side by side, kind of like Harry Potter in the Forbidden Journey at some of the Universal parks. After this, the coaster could do many different things. This new gen flying coaster could go up the lift hill in a vertical position and then twist riders once they go down the drop, kind of like the Flying Dutchman only sideways. One element that did separate this flying coaster from any others is that it had the ability to launch. Now that we have learned the story behind about Vacoma and their flying coasters, 
Let's fast forward to 2020. Fantasialand is almost done with Rookberg one year after their set opening date. Enthusiasts are just waiting for the moment to see Fly and Rookberg in person. Finally, in September, the park would soft open Rookberg to the public, and many park goers filled up Fantasialand just waiting for the doors to open. When everyone finally entered the land, we all got our first taste on the new Vacoma flying coaster. Its track would fill up the land's skyline along with its steampunk theme. Its layout would feature tons of twists and turns, inversions, and even some airtime hills. When a flying coaster may not sound like anything new, this one separates itself since its overall ride experience is so unique. It's something that we really have never seen before. So now let's look back at our title. How Fly Changed the Industry I think the bigger question is how does it not? This is one of the first roller coasters to open in years that is so unique in its own way. Sure we have access coming out soon, but we have not seen one actually open to the public. Maybe Fly is the start of the next coast war. When you look at rides like the Raptors, Launch Flying Coasters, Infinity Flyer, Hot Racer, Axis, T-Rex, Mock Extreme Spinner, there are so many new coaster models being produced around the world. We haven't seen something like this in years. Vacoma has been upping their game since 2016. When Vacoma introduced Formula, their new Space Warp model that opened at Energylandia, it started a whole new revolution for the manufacturer. Throughout the past five years, we have seen them create some of the greatest coasters in the world using their newer models. They introduced their Bermuda Blitz model when Legendia opened Let Coaster in 2017. They introduced their Firestorm model when Wrath of Zeus opened at Vin Wonders in 2020. They are in the process of introducing their newer models like the Energy Storm, Shockwave, and Top Gun models for the 2021 season. But one thing we are finally seeing from Vacoma is that they are taking their old, outdated models and updating them to have a much more thrilling and smoother experience. Take a look at their SLC model. It's known for being the worst coaster model in existence by many enthusiasts. So, Vacoma redesigned this model and created the suspended thrill coaster, otherwise known as the STC. We would see the first one open at Tripstro with Hal's Uberkopf. This coaster had already become known as one of the best inverted coasters in the world, and it hasn't even been open for a year. Now we are seeing them redesign their Flying Dutchman models with their new gen flying coasters like Fly. Why? Because it shows us two things. One, Vacoma isn't messing around anymore. They want to change their reputation from an aero copycat to one of the greatest attractions manufacturers in the world. Two. The first ever flying launch coaster. That shows us that any coaster that is unique in its own way has the ability to launch. We are seeing that with B&M and their wing coaster model. Now we are seeing it with Vacoma and their new gen flying coaster model. And soon we could see it with GCI's new steel track since they advertise that they are able to use that track to launch riders. I don't think Fly is going to be a one hit wonder like some of Vacoma's other models but I do believe that we will be seeing a lot of these pop up very soon. Where exactly? I bet we'll see a lot of these open in some of the Asian parks, as we are seeing with the Firestorms and Top Guns. But I do believe we'll see some spread across Europe and hopefully in America throughout the next six to eight years. I bet we could see parks like Energylandia investing into one of these models in the near future, but I would love to see one of these open at a park that likes to go over the top when it comes to theming. Parks like Port Aventura, Europa Park, Efteling, or maybe even Disney. I think the future for this model is looking bright, so stay tuned to see what new and revolutionary models begin to pop up around the world. So what do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to like and subscribe for new content just like this every week. This was Hunter from Theme Park Hunting, I'll see you guys later and follow the thrill.